Hey there, welcome back, folks, to another episode of Magic Arena. We have a new deck and a new cover for everything. I mean, we've got Eddie Murphy here. We've got uh, the quick constructed event that we can go into, which I think is more intended for people who spent money on the game, considering you could spend money on it, and it's not really worth it. It's the rich get richer sort of thing. So we do just standard playing around here for now. And then we have quick draft. They're working out the bugs. It's not as quick as they want it to be. So um, yeah, they'll get around to that. Anyways. <laughs> yes, yeah, so Dominary is here. There's a few extra things. We're running a Rakdos-ish deck. <laughs> It does have some of the Jund aspects. It's not the same Jund deck as before. We're uh, running a whole bunch of new things in the deck. Let's switch the mode so I can get into it. So it's a little closer to the controlling end with some Planeswalkers as you see going on here. And just a little bit of that going on. So we got two Duress at the bottom to uh, not get punked out by uh, things like procession or counter spells at a key time that kind of thing uh magma spray to deal with uh certain anything uh, always a red deck wins in mind when it comes to these things always keep red deck wins in mind but it does work on other things uh scare god so on and so forth embalm creatures we've got the poisoner still in here based on the last uh deck but it's removal for two if you want to look at it. It's a little set up, but whatever. We've got Seeker Squire here to make sure that we hit land drops. Uh, we've got Forecast Down. There's not as many legends as you would think going around. I'm very comfortable with Forecast Down at this time. We've got four Braid in here for more removal. So Red Deck wins. Um, yeah, I got ten spells in the one and two slot for you. Not to mention four more if I feel like it. We've got four treasure map in here just to get all the treasure, all the colors, all of the cards. We want to be drawing cards. So all the removal at the low end and then treasure map to try and keep us going. We got Rampaging Ferocidon for the go wide decks. We got Goblin Chain Whirlers, two of them. As much as you see the third color and all that going on. Uh, yeah, it's still possible. Most of the time, it's possible in this deck to run Chain Whirler and clear those go wide strategies of all kinds. We got Doomfall if we need to uh, strip something out of an opponent's hand, or if they're playing a big creature, that kind of thing, then maybe we can clear it. We've got Hazred as a great top deck still in this kind of deck. This is generally a much different deck than last week's, trust me. We got Vraska's Contempt, and we got Karn. I got out of my first pack of Dominaria. It went downhill from there, but it was the first pack. And it's like, okay, that makes up for every crappy pack again for Dominaria from here on out. So, yep, Karn, pretty good. He uh, draws cards. Does a lot of dirtling. He's very dirtly. Um, but uh, he does keep me in the game a lot longer when you're starting to hit top deck mode. Karn just says, okay, see all those lands? At least you're getting the lands out of the way, and maybe you'll be able to uh, grab the other cards later. Got uh, a Glorybringer still sticking around here. Um, I want to have a small creature presence in the deck, so uh, Glorybringer, it kills things. It's justified. I took out other two for uh, Liliana to <laughs> just make a, a board state, obviously. That's what she's there for, making board states and maybe recurring uh, things around here that might be useful uh, occasionally. I've got Ongroth Flame Chained, uh, intended to go up against control. When they start getting a little cute doing their things, you uh, duress or doomfall their things away, then Ongroth comes down and starts stripping the rest away from them. So he starts uh, picking away and picking away and picking away at them. Then we got Vraska at the top, the only green in the deck right there to Vraska. And we're basically running two, three, four, five Planeswalkers. We'll draw them, and then a whole bunch of stuff to kind of get us there, and do a bunch of dirtily things till we get do get there. If we had more stuff in the economy, I'd be cooler with probably filling it out a bit, but for now, yeah, this is fine. 
Uh, mana base is a sheltered thicket, two rootbound crag, one forest, uh, just to uh, make sure that we do have green at some point in time. So three sources of green uh, for the two Vraska, plus we have all the treasure, so Vraska is not that hard to cast. Got two uh, summit, two cinder barrens, eight mountains, and nine swamps. And hopefully it gets us there. There are a few options that uh, could come up for it, but hey, let's get into some games and see how it does. I want to play blue for just this. I do. <laughs> Karn's Temporal Sundering. I hear it's a pretty interesting card. All right, we're up against the Golden Sun. If they didn't, if they fixed the uh, rankings, which I don't think they did, uh, we might be against an equally matched person. Or maybe not, we'll see. Okay, so we got a whole ton of removal, a potential clock if we want it. Card draw to keep us going. Seems good. And the mana's just fine. Unless we draw a chain whirler off the top. <laughs> Let's see what our opponent's up to. They are up to red. Well, I got her green. Not bad. I'm going to jam the treasure map and then set a stop. We're going to find out what our opponent's up to and see if uh, we need to be more careful. This is the very first... Ow. Red deck wins deck I've come up against yet. Like, ever since Dominaria released, this is the first red deck wins I've come across. Frostodon doesn't feel right here. We want to be able to... Uh, Take out their stuff in good time. Land drops plus, uh, yeah. Let's just look out for the the, uh, the on crop crasher, which poisoner is very good at taking out. I hear. Which is exactly what we're going to use it for. He's getting that guy out of the way. Cast down. Not bad. I didn't get my scry on there. Very relevant. But we can take out two creatures. We can also Vraska's Contempt. Very relevant. So we're going to see uh, what kind of gas our opponent comes up with here. Might just simply take you down their stuff. They're going to go with that. Alright, well we're just going to... Oh... Mm... Yeah, well, let's do this. We may run into Hazoret. It may be important. So, let, let's get that out of the way. Let's set this stop, by the way, for the treasure map. Do you have a creature? Bringing Runner. Yep. Let's, uh... Let's cry. You gonna abrade my treasure map? You gonna abrade my treasure map? Jerk. No, we need this red source, don't we? Yeah, we do. Alright, what's coming after us that's a big problem that we have to worry about? I mean, we could glory bring this, take a hit. What's he going to do? Spend his turn doing removal on Glorybringer? Let's get rid of the Raging Runner. Not really, really worried about his next hit. Landry can be problematic. All right. Seeker's Squire. He's still got plenty of cards in hand, so I'm not fearing the Hazoret yet. Let's go this way. Hunt for a land drop. We don't need the land drop. Uh, let's keep this going. Good. Let's keep our removal solid for now. Let's see what we're fearing here.
What are we fearing? Glory bringer would be a little rough. Sure. Daredevil can target a cast down. Resolves. Glorybringer's done his removal. But he's still getting the value regardless here. That Kenra is soon on its way. Let's just deal with Lannery now. Let's not have her not a problem. We are running out of gas. Very relevant. But we do have the Abraid. So there's that. And our mana is one spell at a time. Let's force him to uh, come up with a solution to the Seeker Squire. If he attacks in, he's got burned, so we kill it. If not, we kill it, <laughs> I guess. That's fifth land. That Kenra's getting dangerously close. Four mana. Phoenix. Yeah, this is getting a little rough. Okay, Phoenix is a problem. We're going to need to come up with some sort of long-term solution to stuff here. Ah. Uh, the fact that he abraded the treasure map is very, very uh, important here to note. We need that thing badly in this deck. And when people take it out, that's usually what kills the deck. So the few times that it gets abraded, that's what happens. Uh, so this is an obvious... Uh, no blocks. Pretty obvious. All right, we're braiding it. Screw it. We got to come up with our long-term solution regardless, though. Okay. I mean, it's not a great long-term solution, but it's a solution. It will definitely deal with a tap out on Kenra. All right, he's got an abrade there. Got it. We may be dealing with a Hazaret very soon. With no real way to be able to clear it. Trailblazer. Can't block that. Nice. We're going to return the favor. Put a clock right back on him. That was a decent top deck. That's what Hazard is. It's a great top deck when you're running dry. Our opponent's running out of gas. That Kenra's coming down the moment he has that six land, though. Rigging runner. Fine. Now, I'm wondering if we're going to have a bad turn where... Uh, we're not going to be able to, uh, or we're going to have a fork in the road of decisions. Send this in. If he blocks, he blocks. Oh, son of a! Oh, well. I'll make up for it. I'll make up for it. That's the land drop. Interesting.
We're gonna kill you. He's holding up mana. Expecting something. Did we reveal to him a poisoner? Yes, we have. So he's watching out for that. This is the fork in the road decision. So the fork in the road decision involves me going uh, plus on Braska, not minus. That gives him something he has to burn. That makes our Hazard able to block, so the Kenra uh, is negated. He may be able to kill Vraska through some means. But well, we're going to make it tough on him. So, no attacks. You can spend your removal on that guy. Take it very carefully. We're at more health than him at the end of the day. We just want to make sure we stay there. So, one more card remaining. He's going to strike himself. He says, that's it, that's all. <laughs> he can't possibly get through this. Nice. All right. We got that quest done. Nice. So that gives us some gold. Now, the events, like I said, they're kind of great for people that spent money, but I found that, you know, janky mana, base, that kind of thing, not all the cards you need, makes it very difficult to win unless you went for a very specific tuned deck right off the get-go. Turns out the deck I want to go for, it's kind of, you know, it's all right, but it's intended for a best of three format, and the best of one just get, get rolls right over it. So, there's that. Anyway, so with that said, let's take a look at a pack in our brief intermission. Let's go grab a pack. And we'll go ahead and grab a Dominaria because that sounds like fun. It's new uh, Shiznit. Anything cool? No? Chuggernaut, jeez. Flame of Keld. Yeah, that's where I want to be. Dargos! Okay, I want to point out. I, I I don't know if they've had the sort by set thing yet appear, but oh good god. Are you freaking kidding me? I have two Dargos already. I also have... I can't believe this. This brief intermission is brought to you by something's wrong with these packs because there's only three or four rares in the entire freaking set. And I got Marwin. <laughs> and a Karn. <laughs> Any case, let's roll into our second game. And we got a match immediately versus Kuznarok who has not decided to show up on my screen. They just decided to not show the lightning matchmaking thing. <laughs> okay, we have Cast Down, Ferocidon, and eventually Liliana. We're on the draw. We're probably gonna find more things to play with here. Don't know what our opponent's playing, but Evolving Wilds tells me it's possibly something slow and that this hand may or may not be good. Though, lots of lands is always a good thing, right? I just like to have a treasure map on the ready for that kind of stuff. Sparring Construct? I mean, okay. Ship it over. The new card does stuff. Gleaming Barrier. Is this a Karn deck? We're gonna poison that. Because it's basically free for now. 
So we're not really worried. So we're down to that. We can certainly send in the poisoner without any fear. Jam a Ferocidon. You want to play a bunch of artifact creatures? Go right the hell ahead. But you're going to be paying some life to do it. Nothing! Alright. Uh, this may... Well, that was pretty quick. He may have something here. Yeah, you can't block that. You can't block that. You can block the poisoner, sure. You got yourself a treasure. He needs that for mana, obviously. That's fine by us. He's playing some creatures. We got all the creature removal in the world. We're fine. He farms the... Ferocidon? I mean, okay. Alright. No plays. Get ourselves a Dragon Skull Summit. Well, I think we bring that Ferocidon back out just to piss him off. Apologies for the smell. I've been recruiting. I hear he doesn't like it, so we'll bring it back out. <laughs> We're gonna send the attack first before Liliana. Because I don't wanna have to, I don't wanna pay life if I don't have to, that kind of thing. Okay, Chain Whirler, do I need you? Other than just more beat sticks. I think we need more beat sticks. Let's get in there. Wham! There, we each pay one. You happy? I made it fair. <laughs> I don't know what our, our opponent's deck is supposed to be. They spend a treasure on a farm and then they lost the mana again. Okay. Our, our opponent didn't really do much that game. Let's be fair. They didn't get to do much. Well, I mean, let's go for another one? I hate this card. It makes things difficult. <laughs> it always shows up the moment you have something to target the player. It's just like, boom! Oh. Not, even during times when it's not really necessary. It's just like, hi, I'm here. Like, oh, come on. I had someone play it as their first creature when I was... I don't remember what I was exactly doing. I think I was going to Doomfall them or something like that. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay, we've got a Poisoner as our removal. It's not the greatest set of answers, but uh, we don't need it. Our opponent's on the play with this kind of stuff. That's not great. Blue being able to set up counter spells before we're ready is a little annoying. Riddle form, you say? Huh. Does that change things? Let's get the map down. I want to uh, go into a game where I'm uh, going faster than the odds. Riddle form doesn't bother me that much. Not yet. We'll eventually be able to kill it. I'd like to get to those answers. River Sneak? What in the hell? Like that? That's how you do it, folks. That is how you do it. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> Let's do it again. <laughs> Ocarin. So we're going to totally get paid for our uh, good run by uh, an opponent that can do no wrong here, right? That's how the karma works. <laughs> Opponent on the play again. We have a dress. Are we gonna get some dress karma? Don't know, but we can keep. We've got a doomfall to follow it. It's blue. We're in the right spot, I hear. 
So let's drop our shelter ticket that gives us Dragon Skull Summit untapped. We can then dress and uh, muck with their plans. Or Kite Sail Freebooter. That's something. <laughs> I don't care about the kite sail freebooter that much. You want to hold my card for me? Fine. Yeah, uh, he takes the doomfall? It doesn't matter. We're, we're going to jam this first. We're not going to dress him. We need that down. Then we're going to dress him. Well, kite sail freebooter tells me closer to God Pharaoh's gift sort of thing. We're gonna fire this duress at him either way. We're gonna find out what his plan is. Really? Really, buddy? You're gonna rope. This is our karma. This is our karma. He's gonna rope. Pick up the pace. Make a decision. Let Can I have my turn, please? Are we going to have an opponent that immediately goes AFK? I don't know. It seems like it. They're just going to AFK on us. I mean, whatever. Seriously? <laughs> so, apparently, all I have to do is record YouTube videos and I get the best games in the world. I should be doing this all the time. I could throw you all kinds of random games. I'm trying to throw you more decks and give you ideas of all the different directions. I'm just trying to get those decks online. So I'll be trying to unlock packs as much as I can. Although I don't think I've unlocked a single wizard for the wizard deck that I really want to make. That's where I want to be. But I mean free win is free win. <laughs> and it's a free win. There was an oops in there? What the hell was that? I don't know. Kind of weird. Let's do one game and hope we get a real cool one. That would be great. <laughs> and then we'll round it off there. Oh, we found somebody. Shara Pasta. Sharasa Pasta. Sorry, sorry, sorry. All right, healing them up in a most buggy looking. That's so tilting the way those cards move. It's like, wow, the animation looks so bad, so bad. But anyway, I uh, like, there's no way that, you, it, like everyone watching can clearly see that's so bad. So we have removal source. We're against some blue white. Let's get this rootbound crag down and on the ready. Okay, so we're going to jam Poisoner, then we're going to jam Map. We're going to do Poisoner on their turn. It's usually the best way to get a Poisoner down. So let's jam it. Now this may be Approach, and it's very likely that it's an Approach deck. Not a good game for us. Okay. So, Poisoner, forever a distraction. That's all he is in that instance. She, sorry. <laughs> Just a distraction. Intended so that we get all our sweet value. We need a land, yes. We'll take it. Which means that we'll let this draw pass. And we'll also set down our treasure map. 
if he fields a, if he does field of ruin, we're going to get the red source. We're going to ignore the green. So now we get tons of scries. So we're going to be trying to scry to our duresses for his approach when it comes. We don't have to win through creatures, but we do have to keep him off his approach. So we're going to hunt the duresses down. Or stuff to apply pressure. Dire Fleet Poisoner is by no means pressure. But we're gonna we're, we're gonna push it on him. So any good card. Cinder Barons. Feels like a pretty slow land right now. We're gonna be good on mana very shortly. Let's set this untap step. Uh, can I have priority? Thank you. Yeah, your pressure. We'll take you. Okay, so that gets a counter spell very easily. So how do we get the counter spells away from him? We can't exactly jam the treasure map. He's got the field of ruin on the ready. So we're going to make him decide. We're going to play this just slowly enough. Poisoner. Okay. Set the stop, by the way. So we jam this treasure map. We want him to feel the ruin us before the untap. That's what we want. Actually, I want that. I think our hand looks freaking great. This may cause a shuffle. That's fine. We're going to draw. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten mana, if we want it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's not ten. Duh. <laughs> so, what do we throw into them? Let's cancel that. Let's let's do the scry. We we're gonna do this one step at a time. I want a, a planeswalker down. I'm just not sure how to go about it yet. We already have our land drop. There we go. More land. I'm gonna jam Braska as a start. What say you to that? We're going to try and eat a negate if he's got it. Interesting. This might be a cast out, though. To be fair, that might be a cast out. Now we've got a creature, at least. We can also set his life total to one within a couple turns. Or he's got the cast out, exactly. So he probably would have saved cast. Uh, he would have probably countered it if he could easily counter it. By the way, so he fields a ruin. Field the ruins. Uh, treasure land. Sure. And we need our third red for chain whirler. Done. Done deal. All right, treasure hunt. Treasure hunt.
Another chain whirler. All right, let's see if he wants to invest in this guy. All right, let's try the Angrath then. He does indeed have cancel. Not looking as great as I would have hoped. All right, now I want to apply pressure. I will sacrifice a treasure for this. His deck is probably fully geared against creatures. Uh, we're going to need lots of pressure, I think. Let's just gradually play around Settle the Wreckage for now. That's not an end turn, that's a uh, first strike. Let's jam another Chain Whirler, I guess. What the heck? Essence Scatter. Okay. Poisoner? I'm gonna find out what's in his hand one way or another. Enter. We're still drawing two extra cards over time here. So let's... Let's go with this. Let's go with this. Let's find out what our top card is. Okay. It's hunting. Uh, graveyard. That's uh, probably a good uh, clean up there. That's not the replacement I was hoping for. <laughs> Just no. He still got four mana untapped. Problematic. Let's send four this time. Saddles. Okay. That doesn't bother me too much. So let's get a... Um, one of those, one of those. We're good on mana. Which means, he, if he fired it that early, he has another one. Which I want to get rid of. Well, so deck needs to really come through here, and unfortunately, every time I play against approach, the deck is going to draw dead. It just will. <laughs> it's what it likes to do. I want to keep a clock on him no matter what, so we're going to do that. He hasn't found his approach. And we're so low on gas. We are no longer drawing extra cards. There's the approach. Now we have to kill him. Alright. Okay, treasure map down. Let's use some of this. Let's uh, use some more of this. Not using that for anything. Seeker Squire, not enough. We really need to be able to dress away a uh, cell of the wreckage so we can kill him. To bury his problem. 
let's slow this down. Keep up the pace. Yeah, you got it. Whatever. So he untaps two lands to retain settle. He played that very carefully. Let's set this. We need to specifically be able to duress him. So let's find out if we can get there. Nope, not a land. Like I said, the deck will try to throw every dud at me it possibly can. I, as I, yeah, <laughs> clearly. It just will. Him shuffling my crap back in is really pissing me off too. Just saying. We're going for face. Him casting uh, him casting approach of the second sun is basically a sure way to uh he's got the supreme will. How far does that get him? One, two, three, four. It gets him there. Like I said, deck will reliably, reliably draw dead at that point. It's like, okay, we have outs. We have outs. You know where they are? I don't. <laughs> but whatever. Gave you a uh, well, I mean, it's the loss of the day, I guess. <laughs> Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. It's a uh, deck that I cannot get to beat approach. I may just have to say this doesn't beat approach. And that's that. And just uh, suck up those games when it happens. Every now and then you will beat approach with it, though. I mean, it does have tools to beat approach. It just, it doesn't have the aggression that, uh, you know, like a red deck wins would uh, roll over them, that kind of thing. We just don't have that here. We have heavy removal intended to deal with the creature decks that are out there. The approach decks, not really. We have enough to shore up against it. That's about it. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed a uh, slightly stranger deck with a, a few different cards of my collection <laughs> thrown in there. And see you later. Take care. Bye-bye.